Chechen fighters have been taking part in Russia's counter-offensive in the Kursk region since Ukraine's surprise incursion in the region in early August. Both Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov and commander of the Akhmat unit Apti Alodinov have stated that Chechens were defending Russia's border region. However, recently there were reports about a large number of Russian fighters, among them Chechens, surrendering to Ukrainian troops during the attack on Russia's Kursk region. Apti Alodinov, the commander of the Akhmat Special Forces Unit, which is a paramilitary organization in Russia's Chechnya, has harshly criticized the Kadyrovites who have surrendered to Ukrainian troops. You don't deserve to live. Get yourself killed. Alodinov said in a 12-minute video, the commander of the Akhmat Special Forces Unit said that Chechen fighters who voluntarily surrendered to Ukrainians will not be returned to Chechnya. According to Alodinov, only the wounded and killed should be returned. He also addressed the Ukrainian military and said that they could do whatever they wanted with the captured Chechen fighters. I have a question. Those of you who voluntarily surrendered into captivity, how deluded you must be that you think I would ask or do anything to get you out of captivity. I don't respect you at all. I don't think that you deserve to live because I wonder how you are going to after you raised your paws and surrendered like girls in captivity. How are you going to live at all? Even now you are in captivity. Just stand up, take a pen, a nail and attack someone. Do everything to get killed in order to die as men. When you surrendered, you broke a vow, which automatically makes you fall under people who have strayed from the sacred path. Ukrainians, keep them for yourself. We don't need them at all. And it makes absolutely no difference to me what you do with them. Alodinov concluded. The State Duma has responded to Alodinov's comments, stating that Russians are being released from captivity and that Chechnya is part of Russia. It should be noted that earlier, Alodinov claimed that those captured during the Ukrainian troops' incursion into the Kursk region in early August had no relation to the Akhmat Special Forces unit. His claims were rejected by media reports. The Ukrainian military faces Russian aggression in the Grain Corridor zone on a daily basis, The Times writes. The media managed to talk to representatives of the Ukrainian Naval Forces Control Center in the fight and learned some details about how cargo ships and infrastructure are protected against the corridor that is about 130 kilometers long and 200 meters wide. The commander of the Varan Division told the publication about a warning regarding a mine that was just a few meters from the pier which would have caused a large explosion. We had little time. As soon as the waves started pushing the mine towards the pier, it would have exploded. We couldn't let it explode in the port. It was unsafe, but we had to get closer to try to tow it away, he said. As the media describes, once the cargo ships leave Ukrainian waters, they must keep to the coasts controlled by NATO countries, pass through the Bosphorus into the Sea of Marmara, and then end up in the Mediterranean. Journalists report that in order for the grain ships to enter the corridor, they form a convoy, and then the Ukrainian fleet provides them with an escort. The Ukrainian crews, mostly men, who once served alongside the Russian sailors, only occasionally speak to the media to ensure that their relatives in the occupied territories are not in danger, the newspaper says. According to the Times, Russian occupiers recently struck a cargo ship in Romanian maritime territory as it was heading to Egypt from Chornomorsk. Last year, they detained a Turkish ship. The helicopter landed. Everyone was searched and released. It was a show of force. They constantly threaten on the radio. We will shoot you now. They do this every day, said Ukrainian Navy spokesman Dmitro Platenchuk. Experts noted that the Russians mainly use Iranian drones and mines, as well as Lancet drones, to attack infrastructure associated with the Grain Corridor. Varon recalled how they had only a few minutes to prevent a catastrophe when one of the sea mines was too close to the port. According to him, one of the divers jumped overboard, swam to the mine and came face to face with it to carefully attach a tow rope to it. The diver has to hold it carefully in his hands, find a place to tie the rope. They are always in mortal danger. It's just terrible. We had to slowly pull it five miles from the port. It took an hour. We brought it out into clear water. The diver went back down, untied the rope, set the fuse and came back on board. As soon as the ship sailed to a safe distance, there was a beautiful explosion. Varan said. 